Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make a game ready barrel in Blender and Substance Painter that you can put into Unreal, Unity, whatever sort of engine you want. So you want to come through to Blender, start up a fresh scene, use A and X to delete everything. Actually I'll turn on my screencast keys for you. Uh, where, do I where do I do it? There it is. You can see that. So delete everything, I'm going to add a cylinder. Press your 1 on your number pad to come into front view. Tab into edit mode. Press Control R to add a loop cut. And then left click and right click to drop one cut just in the center. And you're going to press 1 on your keyboard. Um, and hold Z and go into wireframe mode. Highlight these bottom vertices. Press X and delete vertices. Now you've just got the top bar. And we're going to come into your modifiers tab here, back in, in uh, object mode. Add a modifier, go to mirror, change it to Z, and add clipping. So now, if we add, I don't know, some geometry here, like this, it'll add it to the bottom side as well. We just do that. So, we obviously don't want a barrel to be two meters wide. We want it to be what, like a meter at most. So you want to come and press S, Shift and Z so it will only scale it. It will scale it on the X and Y but not on the Z. So you keep the height. Uh, and we're going to put it, we're going to type in 0 0.5 so it's one meter wide. Um, and then we're going to come back into wireframe mode, grab these top verts and bring them down just a little bit. So it's uh, it's about a meter tall as well, just, bit, just slightly taller than a meter. I'm going to bring it up so it's touching the floor, just like that. And then what we're going to do, come back into your edit mode. You can do this in solid view, it doesn't matter. Select your top face here, press I to inset. Bring it in just a little bit so you get this nice rim. And then E, pull it down and I'm going to Press I a few times just to get some more geometry on the top. It's not full exactly needed, but it, it, it'll help when you're uh, texturing. Um, and then we're just going to come to your front view again, add in a loop cut, uh, press Ctrl B to go into your bevel, bevel it just slightly, go into your face mode with 3, um, and then hold Alt and E. Extrude faces along normals and bring that up just slightly so you get this nice little rim again. And I'll add one in the middle. Control R, bring it down about there. Alt click in your face mode on this vertical line. If you do it on the top line, it'll do the vertical uh, row. If you do it on the vertical line, it'll do the horizontal row. And then same again, Alt E, just like that. Very nice. And we can right click Shade Smooth, come into this uh, Object Data Properties tab, go to Normals and Auto Smooth. Now you got a nice smooth barrel and with some nice geometry. So we need to UV map this now. So what we're going to do, come into Edit Mode, press 2 to go into your Edge Select, hold Alt and click and then hold shift and click these edges as well. You want to, rule general rule of thumb is you want to put a seam on every 90 degree angle. It, it's what works for me. Obviously some higher detailed objects will need more seams, but for a barrel, this works fine. And then what we're gonna do is grab this edge. We don't really need it here. Uh, Deselect them. Grab these edges all the way down just so we have a seam on the back so everything unwraps properly. This is only needed for a cylinder or a sphere. Anything that's round needs a seam around the back as well. And then we're going to press U and mark seam. Come back into edit mode, uh, object mode. And then just before we unwrap this, you want to press Ctrl A and apply scale. And come back into edit mode, press A, then U and unwrap. And this is only half of the object. 
So we want to make sure everything's signed, there's no stretching or anything, and then we can apply this mirror modifier and unwrap it again. So what you want to do, you want to come into your UV editing tab, add a new image, generate a type color grid, and then click OK, and you'll see it puts your UV map onto this nice UV grid here. So you come onto your right hand side and put material preview by holding Z and it will be white right now. You come to your materials, add a new one. I'm going to call it M underscore barrel. Click this little yellow dot next to your base color, change it to image texture. Click this drop down and click this image. So you can see here we've got no stretching. It's all nice. You've got your seams in the right places. That should be all good. So what you want to do is first you want to duplicate this barrel because we're going to be making a high poly version of the barrel in a second and it just helps have the mirror modifier on it. So we're going to hide this new one that we've duplicated and then we're going to apply the mirror modifier. Come back into edit mode. Unwrap again. And when we come back into material mode, you can see everything works perfectly. All the UVs are fine. Even do it again just to make sure. Yeah. Everything's all good. It's not it's not perfect, but for an, an asset like this in a game, you wouldn't need perfect UVs with, you know, all of the UV space filled for as much detail as possible. It is just a little little prop that's going to add a bit of detail to your scene. So that's fine, so that's our low poly barrel done, so if we name this barrel underscore L that's fine. And we hide this and bring back the other one. I'm going to call this barrel underscore H. So in object mode, I'm going to press, hold control and press 2. And that's going to make everything look real weird, but that's fine. You come into object data properties, UV maps, and delete this. It doesn't need a UV map if it's high poly. And we're going to put the subdivision back in the modifiers tab, and we're going to drag it above the mirror, just to make sure that nothing breaks. So now what we need to do is come in and add some loop cuts with Control R around the sharp edges of the mesh just to keep the, the sharp bit sharp, but then we can add the details in as we go. Pull this up, like that. But you can see it's sharp, but there is the slightest bit of a curve and that'll look real nice in the uh, when we bake it on. I'm gonna come through again, more edge loops, pull them down. If you place an edge loop, just like this, and you realize you want to move it, you can double tap G and it will move the entire edge loop across its normal. Like that, you can see, got a very nice, smoothed, sharp barrel. Looks real clean. So, just for the purpose of a tutorial, you wouldn't really do this on a barrel. But just to show you what texture baking can do, I'm going to add a, a loop cut here, bevel it, select these faces, alt -E, and extrude them in a bit. See, so you, we have this curve, and I'm going to just pull these up a bit so you can see, you know, the, the indents. You wouldn't really do that for a barrel, but if you're going for something sci-fi, you might do. But I'm gonna show. You, I'm just doing this to show you what it'll look like when it's baked. And we're going to select this face, hold Shift S, and cursor to selected, and then Shift A in object mode and add a circle. Come into your top view, bring the circle down a bit, shrink it, and then put it over here. I'm gonna fill it and extrude it up a bit. And then I'm going to extrude this again, move it over, 
and pull that up. So you get like a little cap there. What we want to do, hide those two objects you just made. Bring back the low poly barrel. By its scale, by everything. And then you want to export it as an FBX. I'm going to make a new, to, uh, new folder. I spell that wrong, but doesn't matter. Path mode copy. Click that. Don't know what it does. It embeds the textures. Yes. I'm not 100% if you need to do this, but I do it and I never have any issues. So. Limit it to selected objects. Click mesh. Apply units. Use space transform. Don't want to bake animation because there is no animation. It just adds extra data that isn't there. And then I'm going to name it barrel underscore L. Everything else is all good. We apply modifiers, doesn't matter. Add leaf phones, doesn't matter. Export. Okay, and then we're going to hide this low poly barrel. Bring back the high poly sub. Click the little cap and then hold shift and click the barrel. And we're going to export again as FBX. Change the name to barrel underscore H. Keep all of these settings the same because it's going to apply the modifiers for us. So it's going to apply the subdivision, then it's going to apply the mirror, and it'll look fine. We're going to export the FBX. Okay, so that's us done in Blender for now. Um, and I'll see you over in Substance Painter. Okay, so now you're in Substance Painter. I'm going to come over to close here. I'm using, I think, one of the newest versions of Substance Painter. It'll all work the same anyway, if not. So for, you can use any of these for different things, obviously. I'm going to use the PBR Metallic Roughness just to show you in Blender. But if you're using Unreal, use the Unreal 4. If you're using Unity, use the Unity one, obviously. But I'm just going to be using the Metallic Roughness for that. I'm going to select the file and come to, where is it, Tutorial. Barrel underscore L. Um, I'm going to do it at 2K. If you're doing this in a game, obviously you wouldn't use 2K textures, but I want to show the detail for this tutorial. If you're doing it for a game, I'd say go for 512, but I'm going to go for 2048. Okay, click OK. It should appear. You press F over on this side so you get the full view of your UV. If you hold Alt and left click, you can pan around the um, the asset middle mouse while holding alt moves and scrolling up or down zooms you in or out okay so over on the right here you want to come to texture set settings click bake mesh maps uncheck ID put the output size to the same as what you set at the start so 2048. Come and click this little button here for your high definition mesh and find it. So you want barrel underscore H. Like that. And then for max frontal distance and max rear distance, if you've got a lot of indenting like I do, you want to drag it up quite a bit. So I'm going to put it to about 0.3 just to make sure it catches all of the details. And then come down here, anti-aliasing. I'm gonna put it on four times. Again, if it's a like game asset, you probably won't use four times, but just for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to. And then I'm gonna bake selected textures. And you'll see it's now baking the details in onto the mesh. So click OK. If we come through here, you can see that it's actually flat. It's fully flat, but from a distance, it looks like there's detail there, and it's added a little cap on as well, which is also flat, but from distance, there's a cap. That's a very basic way of baking textures. Works completely fine. Just to do a brief introduction to Substance Painter, we're going to come into your Smart Materials tab, and I like to use the Steel Painted Scraped Dirty, just like this, very nice. And then on top of that, you can come into this folder, click the little folder icon, change the color, so we can go with, I don't know, like a blue or 
pink, whatever, any colour, obviously. I'm gonna go with a blue. And then I tend to give it the rust material as well over in the normal materials, the rust on, like this. And then I add a black mask and that'll hide it. And then over in the alphas tab, you can select one. Uh, I like to go with any of these dirt brushes, dirt alphas, whatever. Bring the size up with the square bracket keys and just paint on some rust in, in some places. Change the alpha. What you can do if you want to paint onto it, change your size jitter, your flow jitter, your angle jitter, and your position jitter. So now when you paint, it just adds random specs everywhere, which is real nice. And you can also paint onto the UV map, and it'll do the exact same thing as painting onto the mesh. I tend to use the UV map for little details, like little imprints and stuff, and just for painting on dirt and rust and whatever, I just use the mesh and paint where it'll look nice. Just like this, and then soon you've got very nice rusty painted barrel. So I'm going to come over to the front here and add a new paint layer, and we're going to set up our layer to print a little warning sign or, you know, a little symbol or something. So you want to come over, scroll down on your properties, and we want the colour. So I'm going to go bright yellow for this. Where's the yellow? There it is. I'm going to go yellow. I'm going to give it a height. Uh, not too much, but I'm going to make it stick out a bit. I'm going to make it quite rough, but I am going to make it metallic as well because it's on the metal. And then I'm going to come down to these alphas here. And what can we find? Is there a warning or something? Yeah, here we go. So warning and again square brackets make it big i'm just going to put that right there and you'll see in a minute i'm going to move that we can destroy this and make it look in, uh, ingrained onto the paint actually i'm going to use this instead that looks a lot better and then i don't know we'll add another symbol um i didn't a little, little new sign why not and just drop that right there and there we go nice okay so what you want to do add a white mask this time, so it keeps everything there and we're destroying it now. And then come back to your alphas, grab a brush, and just start painting. I'm gonna turn off the jitters for this because I want to paint in specific places. And you see how it starts destroying it. I'm gonna put this layer beneath the uh, rust as well. Actually, I'll do it above for now until, what have I done? Oh, let's put it back on white. There we go. Yeah, if you ever notice that it's doing the opposite, just come back to your properties, scroll down, and make sure it's uh, on the colour you want. So again, just switch up your brushes all the time. You don't want it to look too repetitive. Just like this, paint a bit. Get nice and destroyed. Just like that. Very nice. And we'll do the same for the uh, little nuke symbol. Just like that. Very nice. And we're going to come over. Actually, we're going to paint on some rust over it, or some dirt, just like this. Actually, put that above dirt base. Click the little mask editor here. I'm going to change these values. I'm going to turn it up and this down a bit. We don't want too much dirt, obviously. Just want little bits, so we can still see what it is, but. We want it to be destroyed and dirty. And uh, yeah, that's not too bad at all. Now, if you're wondering if you could add little details here and there without a core or anything, you can. You want to come through, do a paint layer, uh, just a blank paint layer, and then click the color thing here, or color tab, and it'll get rid of color. So if I just put the height all the way up, um, and we'll get rid of the roughness and the metal, you just want a height and a normal. Come to your alphas, and then I want some dots on the top. I want some big imprinted dots. Click a few times, and you can see it's added those dots on. You can do this with absolutely anything, which is great for if you're doing a sci-fi piece. Come over here, paint this on. See, you got a little vent there that could work on a wall or anything like that. And um, we can even use symmetry. So if you click this little button here, the two triangles together. And then come to this settings tab. We can do radial symmetry. I want 16 
at 15 at 360 degrees. And then sometimes it's a bit buggy, you know. Yeah, so it's doing it around the mesh. Like that. Which can work. Completely depends. Oh, it's because it's on Z. Okay. So here, you see, it works fine now because I changed it to Y. So it's mirroring on the Y axis. That looks nice. And find a different shape and put it on the top. Grab this. Drink it down a bit. Just like that. And then another one here. Yeah, something like that. Got some arrows. Make it look cool. Why not? There you are. Nice simple barrel made very quickly in Blender and Substance. And then once you've done, you can add whatever details you want. Have a mess around with the settings. You can embed stuff. And find, look, those arrows go in and these ones come out. Just like that. So, once you've finished, come up here to File, Export Textures, and you've got your M underscore barrel. Click this little box here, find where you saved it. I can't remember, but I'll just save it here. Come into this folder, find wherever you want to save it, obviously make a new folder. Select the folder, and it will export the base color, the emissive, the height, metallic, normal, and roughness, which is perfect for Blender. Um, and whatever template you used, it should export everything properly for that engine. Come over here, click export. Everything will get exported. And then you'll have it. So I'll see you back in Blender for the texture setup. Okay, so once you're back in Blender, you're going to want to hide your high poly assets again because they don't have a UV map. Bring back your low poly. And I'm going to go to the shading tab. And delete this. If you have the Node Wrangler add-on, you can hold Control, Shift and T. And it'll bring up this. If not, just drag in the um, materials, the textures manually. I'm going to come here, 3D Painter, Export, Tutorial. You can see everything that it's exported. So for this, we don't need an emissive, so we're going to click and hold control and click the rest of these. It's going to put them in automatically. And you can see we've got our barrel. Now, I don't really like to use displacement unless it's for like a brick wall or something. So I'm going to delete this by pressing X and search for bump. And we're going to put it in the middle of normal map in your shader. I'm going to drag the color from displacement into height and just bring the distance down just a little bit and the strength of your normal down. Just like that. Very nice. And if you come into rendered mode, cycles, GPU, and put on some denoising. Plane, S10. And there you go. We Come back into the shading for this um, plane. I just add a material onto it. Uh, where's my textures? Rustic brick, why not? Go for that. And if we come to color, sky texture. Uh, we'll use this one. There you go, a nice low poly photorealistic barrel made in Blender and Substance Painter. If you like this tutorial, let me know in the comments, drop a like, consider subscribing, it really helps me out a lot. Uh, let me know what you want to see next in the comments as well. I'm happy to do any tutorials, anything you want to see, any texturing help, modeling help, let me know. I'm more than happy to help. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll post the render that I make at the end of the video. Thank you.